CityWorks Expo is a collaborative, co-creative, and multidisciplinary idea exchange and festival conference that happens each fall in Roanoke, Virginia. By day, attendees are immersed in thought-provoking presentations, riveting performances, and engaging dialogue. By night, the conference continues with after-hours networking opportunities during street festivals, parties, and musical events. To learn more about Expo, visit CityWorksExpo.com. Expo 2014 was made possible by these fine sponsors. Cool. Good morning. Hi, I'm Pete, and what I actually do is I try to get people to go for a hike. And in the process, they become Roanoke cheerleaders and ambassadors. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the story, about how we're doing that and why we're doing that. You know, so really what we're trying to do is make the Roanoke region a better place to live, work, and play. And my tool for doing that is Mother Nature. You know, we plant seeds and we start conversations and we, we watch them grow. So most of your communities have, a, have local economic and regional uh, economic development offices. Uh, and if you aren't entirely clear on what they do, you know, quite simply they, they create jobs and they try to attract people and businesses to the area. So I work for the Roanoke Regional Partnership, which is, you guessed it, the Regional Economic Development Organization for the Roanoke area. So we're funded by eight local governments and about 200 private businesses. And, and, and thanks to their foresight and their vision, you know, we're working together to leverage our natural assets to attract talent and investment to the region. The goal of our non-traditional you know, economic development approach is quite simple, to get more people connected and engaged with the outdoors, and to leverage our natural assets to attract talent and investment to the region. And I'm going to get into why in uh, just a few minutes. Has anyone here heard of the night soul of the community study? One hand, two, few hands. Cool. Uh, check it out. You know, it was done by the Knight Foundation. That's, that's Knight with a K. Uh, and Gallup, you know, the people that do the polls. So it was a study that determined the key indicators that make a community sticky. You know, and by stickiness, it means how attached a person is to their community and how proud they are of where they live and how that translates into economic growth. So the top three indicators of that study are openness, you know, how welcoming a community is to different people, the aesthetics of a community, you know, the physical beauty, the green spaces, and then the social offerings, you know, or opportunities for social interaction and citizen engagement and caring. So it was a three-year study. It compared residents' attachment level to the GDP growth in 26 communities over the course of five years. And the findings really showed a significant correlation between community attachment and economic growth, which basically means, as I said earlier, the more people like where they live, the more economic growth that community experiences. So raise your hand if you, if you currently live in what you view as a sticky community. Keep it up. <clears throat> raise your hand if you want to live in a community that's sticky, or you're trying to change your community into a sticky community. All hands really should be up. <laughs> you know, that's really why we're here, isn't it? You know, we want our communities to be where all the cool kids live. And so that's kind of what, where we're going with this. So in looking back at the history of Roanoke, Roanoke was the gateway to the West. You know, we were the last stop before the pioneers headed off to stake their claim and their fortune. You know, eventually the railroad came to town, and ever since the railroad's been part of our identity, we take pride in our rail heritage, but we're not happy to rest on those laurels alone. We like that independent, pioneering spirit of our forefathers, and, and we're using that to find our stickiness. So we want to be known for our great food and our music, for our creative artists, our hoppy beers and great coffee, our ingenious entrepreneurs and our cutting-edge companies, and an, as an extremely healthy and active community. And all of this is centered around the outdoors. You know, every community needs to identify what its strengths are and then figure out how to leverage them to get where they want to go. For us, it's our natural amenities. It's the outdoors. Those are the assets that connect everything we want to be together. It's helping us become known as an all-around vibrant place where people want to live and where businesses want to locate. But no matter what you want to be, it, it has to be real. You know, if it's going to be sustainable and, you know, intentionality matters. Uh, you can't be something you're not. So your idea of camping could mean staying at a one- or two-star hotel. But if you look around our region when you're outside, you'll agree it's a beautiful place, and it, the natural assets are really you know, one of our greatest strengths. We're not trying to be something we're not. We're trying to be uniquely Roanoke. 
And we've got our own kind of little mountain metro mix going on. And there aren't too many places where you can be hiking a world-class trail in the morning, paddling a scenic river in the afternoon, and then ride your bike to see a national music act in the evening. So it's a, it's a pretty cool vibe that we have going on. That's what we have to offer, and that's really what we want to be known for. So first, why the outdoors? You know, more than three out of four Americans engage in some form of outdoor recreation, and that number continues to increase. So I want to do a little experiment, see if we're all above average here. So stand up. It's time for a stretch anyway. So stand up and not yet. I know. I got a little ahead of myself. I have a feeling you'll stand up though. Stand up and remain, remain standing if you like to camp. Okay. Do you know that more people camp in the U.S. than play basketball? Stand up if you like to paddle. You know, raft, canoe, kayak, stand up paddle board. <clears throat> more people pa do paddle sports than play soccer. Stand up if you bicycle. The number of Americans who bicycle is double the entire population of Canada, and that's growing. Stand up if you like to go for a run ever. You know, jog here and there, go for a run. <laughs> you know, r running is the number one activity with regards to frequency of participation. All right, let's see if we can get everyone up. Stand up if you go hiking, climbing, fishing, skiing, birding, walking. <laughs> All right, walking was the number one activity for recreation 100 years ago. It's still the number one activity. So, so you guys can sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, all of this getting outside, it translates to, to big dollars. You know, the, the outdoor industry is an often overlooked economic generator. It's a $646 billion a year industry that employs one out of 20 people in the U.S., you know, for us, it was pretty easy to make the connection with the outdoors. You know, next time you're outside, just look around. If you were to stop 10 people on the street and ask them what makes Roanoke so unique, I guarantee nine, if not, if not all 10, will talk about the mountains, the lakes, the rivers, the trails in, in, in some shape or form. <clears throat> so what's in our backyard? We have millions of acres of public lands, miles of rivers and lakes, including four Blue Way water trails. We have the second largest municipal park in the U.S. It's the largest east of the Mississippi. It's also the largest public conservation easement uh, in Virginia. Uh, we have an extensive and ever-growing greenway system, uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway, four state parks, and more than 1,000 miles of trails, including the Appalachian Trail. You know, and that's just really off the top of my head. I mean, I can go on and on about everything that we have here. <clears throat> so, but again, you know, why the outdoors? <clears throat> Investing and improving in our outdoor infrastructure is relatively cheap, and it has long-lasting benefits. You know, in 50 years, which are people going to be more grateful for? You know, our greenway system that connects our communities or the new Chick-fil-A. <clears throat> so, you know, by focusing on developing your outdoor infrastructure, it not only makes you a more attractive community, it also has lasting economic impact. And being an outdoor community makes us healthier and active, which translates to lower health care costs. You know, show of hands, everybody was standing just a minute ago, but show of hands, you know, who just feels better after you've spent some time outside, if you spend an afternoon hiking? There's a strong correlation between time spent outdoors and overall happiness. The more you're outside, the happier and healthier you are. The outdoors and that, and that associated quality of life makes it easier for us to attract talent, business, investment, and entrepreneurs, you know, all of which are really attracted to that adventurous, pioneering spirit of life that we have going on here. So in stepping back and, and looking at how our outdoor brand has been developing and evolving, it dawned on me that what we've been able to do is give our community and our ambassadors a sales pitch. The outdoors is used to help sell our area. You know, HR departments are now using it to recruit people on a, on, a, on a regular basis because it's part of our community narrative. So from an economic development, the traditional economic development sense, uh, you know, we're trying to attract businesses to the area. We use our outdoor story when we're talking to all prospective companies, whether or not they have anything to do with the outdoors or not. So we try to attract companies that are directly in the outdoor industry, backpack manufacturers, things like that. We also try to attract companies where it's part of their corporate brand, but then also it's part of their employee culture. And so uh, it's been interesting us to see how our outdoor story really resonates with them. Because the quality of life is, is more important to companies nowadays, and it's something we're asked more and more about. And our outdoor story, it just it makes Roanoke stand out when we're talking to these companies. It makes it's something unique about us. So as we've developed our outdoor brand, our community narrative has shifted to one that emphasizes the outdoors. 
And by fostering awareness of what the outdoors can do for our community, we've opened eyes to the benefits of the outdoors, and we've created a platform from which anyone can leverage the outdoors to their benefit. You know, it's the ripple effect, or, or the trickle-down outdoornomics. It's my own, my own word. Just kidding. So, <clears throat> so I have been known to ramble on, and I also know that we're on a time, oh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so, um, but I want to share the steps that, that we've been taking over the past five years to use our natural assets to change our community narrative, again, to where one of, where one of the outdoors is part of who we are. So this is the format we've been using to develop the region's outdoor brand. And as I like to say, it's an ever-evolving process. We're building the plane as we fly it, uh, and so it's, we're constantly changing it. Um, we've chosen to focus on the outdoors as the asset we're using but, you know, to shape our community narrative, but this format really works no matter you know, what the chosen asset is for your community that you decide to use. So we use this formula to start conversations, plant seeds, open eyes, connect user groups, and really begin a, a community dialogue centered around the outdoors. You know, so our initiative and our platform is called Roanoke Outside. And so the first thing we had to do was inventory all our assets. You've, you've got to know exactly what your assets are, and you've got to make it easy for people to connect with them. It took a full year uh, for us to compile all of our outdoor assets, um, but we did compile everything. We put them onto this website, and we used this website to help tell our story. You know, we, it's supported with search engine marketing and Google AdWords and things like that, but we're trying to control, you know, people are searching for their, 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 their questions on the internet, and we're trying to control some of those answers with this information. I'm also big on gateway resources, you know, things that make it easy for people to engage with whatever it is they're seeking. In our case, it's the outdoors. So people do need some hand-holding every now and then. So this website really makes it easy for them to get outside. You know, when I was growing up, my, my parents had a big bell that they would ring at the end of the day. I'd pack a backpack, I'd go out for the day into the woods. And they had a big bell that they would ring, you know, to get us to come in at the end of the day. That's changed. It's not the case anymore. Uh, you know, kids nowadays, you know, they're going from structured activity, structured activity, structured activity. And there's no, uh, you know, freedom for that unstructured outdoor play that's kind of lacking. Uh, but we're starting to see a, a change. We're starting to see a shift where people or parents are realizing that, and they're looking for ways and opportunities to get their kids outside and engage with the outdoors. And so those gateway resources, the things that make it easy for them to do that, are, are, are very important. So on the website, I mean, you'll find you know, directions to trailheads, where to rent a bike, you know, where to hire a guide, even tips on how to green your home. You know, we like to say if it's outdoor or environmental related, it's going to be found on this website. And... Prior to me taking on this role, I ran an outdoor venture center in the area. And so it was my job to know the outdoors. You know, I did that for 12 years. Um, I'm still discovering new stuff. So how is the person that really only gets outside once a month or every now and then, or has never done it, how are they supposed to do that if they don't know where or how? And um, so that's what this is designed to make access, to improve access accessibility to the outdoors. So part of the process that we do is... Uh, you know, we're always looking at what's keeping us from delivering our brand. Uh, so we work with all our stakeholders, our community partners, to improve access to the outdoors, to make the outdoor experience more user-friendly, and to create opportunities. So we've done things like change the trailhead payment structure. You know, you used to, there's a place where you had to park, and you, had to pay, you, couldn't, you couldn't pay your fee right there. You had to go six miles back down the road to buy it. And that place was sometimes closed on Sunday. So we, tried, we worked with them. It's a real simple fix, but now we fix that. So we do things to make it more user-friendly. Uh, we've hosted how to start an outdoor business workshops. Uh, we provide hotel uh, front desk with information to better handle requests, such as where can I go for a hike, where can I rent a bike. Uh, we put brand awareness kiosks in strategic locations throughout the area. We've worked with developers uh, you know, as they're developing a project. Uh, right now we're working with one a $50 million project, and we've worked with them to put a, a river access uh, as part of their development. So we're incorporating how do we connect the outdoors, whether it's adding trails, whether it's adding uh, river access, or whether it's adding a climbing gym. So um, we also identified that we didn't have any brand building events that would attract people from outside of the area or beyond our region, let alone from you know, outside of the state. Uh, so we started America's Toughest Road Marathon. You know, most communities have marathons. Uh, we wanted to make ours uniquely Roanoke, so we went for the toughest route. We wanted to be on bucket list because of the, the toughness of it, but that was a secondary thing. The main thing we wanted to do is we wanted to showcase the beauty of the area. We wanted to connect the Blue Ridge Parkway and the mountains uh, with our greenways and our rivers to our vibrant urban core. And, and so we created this, um, and then you know, it's been featured on the Weather Channel, ESPN, and that's gotten us a lot of press and notoriety from that. Um, and then in uh, 
we also started something called the Go Outside Festival, which takes place in two weeks. So if you want to come back for a little mini vacation, come on back. And this is a pretty cool event. It's centered around the outdoors. There's pro athletes. You can take bikes out. Uh, it's very interactive and experience, uh, experiential, and it's all free. Um, and the reason it's free is because we don't want cost to be a barrier to entry. So we work with our community partners, the city of Roanoke, local businesses that provide us stuff in kind, uh, and a lot of our corporate sponsors so that we can provide this free event. We had about 15,000 people come through last year, and we anticipate about 20,000 coming through this year. And it's not your traditional festival. It's very kid and pet friendly, and we have everything from adult big wheels to, again, pro athletes doing stuff on BMX. We have music and camping. Um, so it's a pretty cool event. So these brand building events, they've been very successful for a few reasons. It gives our community something to be involved with. It gives them opportunities for social interaction centered around the outdoors. And that, again, makes us sticky. And also in the process is making us more healthy and active. Um, they do have a tourism and economic impact. You know, people travel to these events and they do spend money. You know, the, our marathon alone uh, has had $2.1 million in, in direct economic impact since we started it. And again, they've helped garner you know, countless national media mentions. And that, in turn, has helped tell our story and develop our reputation as, as a great outdoor destination. Most of our events and our efforts have really been focused on building the local support. You know, without the support and buy-in from our residents, you know, our outdoor brand, it wouldn't be sustainable. And so I'd say the bulk of my effort has been spent on educating our residents what's right here in their backyard and turning them into our ambassadors and advocates. So that when someone from Roanoke travels, you know, they're traveling and they're asked, where are you from? And they say, Roanoke. And they say, what's it like there in Roanoke? We want the outdoors to be part of the story that they tell. Um, we do a weekly newsletter that highlights what's happening that particular weekend outside. We connect people to opportunities. We highlight advocacy issues. We promote other events. Uh, basically, we connect people with the outdoors and other opportunities that align with the outdoors, such as music, beer, festivals, and the arts. And we have an art by, uh, an art by bike event you know, that, that takes place, a tour. So we really try to marry all of our other assets into this. We also help our outdoor stores make an emotional connection with the customers. So we work with them to create a variety of ways in which they can interact with customers without actually expecting that customer to make a purchase every time they walk through the door. So we work with them to do you know, backpack 101 classes, how to fix a flat tire, pub runs, group rides. Uh, those are just a few of the ways that our retailers are, are making that emotional connection with them. And so that thus, the next time when they need to make a purchase, they'll bypass the internet and they'll go into the brick and mortar store and they're kind of supporting the buy local is what we're, what we're focused on. Because without our local outfitters, our guides, our stores, our parks and recreation departments and our organizations that focus on the outdoors, our story isn't nearly as compelling. They help make our story, so our success is directly tied to their success. They're all listed on that website, Roanoke Outside, uh, for free, and we support everything they do for free uh, because, again, they help tell our story. So together, you know, all of this, our events, our website, our outfitters and guides, our ambassadors, they're telling our story, which is developing our national image as one of an outdoor recreation mecca. You know, but it cannot be a build it and set it aside or they will come proposition. You know, as I said in, earlier, intentionality matters. Uh, we've had great success telling our story to the world and developing our outdoor brand. And so now, instead of us building the outdoor brand, uh-oh, the outdoor brand is starting to shape Roanoke. Um, so I'll skip over all that. I'll just... We've done a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> Take me. Actually, I'll be doing the uh, lunch. I'll do that lunch thing, and you guys can come pick my brain on that. So, so one thing that I'm particularly excited about is we recently formed the Roanoke Outside Foundation. Uh, as another tool to help cultivate our outdoor community. So as a region, we're going to continue to invest in improving our outdoor infrastructure, improve access, increasing ways to activate that outdoor experience, and there's really no telling how sticky we're going to be 10 years from now. So figure out what your strengths are and then formula, formulate a plan on how to make it stick. Plant those seeds and start those conversations. That's me without my beard on the there. That's my contact information. That's my cell phone. Call me. Contact me. And with that, I thank you, and I welcome any questions.